Thank you. Thank President, please be seated. Le président. The court is soir. now back in session. Reprise de débat. Again, the floor is given to the co-prosecutors to put questions to this witness. You may do so. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci. Mr. Witness, uh, going back to the Monsieur work you did at the Trappiang Tama Dam work site, would you say the work was easy or difficult? And why would you, would you characterize it that way? Of course, the work at the Trapiantma Dam website was uh, difficult. It's not uh, easy. And what was it that made it most difficult for you? First, it's the food uh, ration. The food was not sufficient. A bowl of rice was for four workers, and they put a bowl of soup in the middle. And it was tasteless. Uh, it was a bit salty, but nothing else. I think you mentioned before the break uh, workers falling asleep leaning on their pickaxe handles or hoe handles. Can you tell us about that? We fall asleep when, while we was working, for example, when it was my turn to dig the earth, then I put the earth into the basket, then the two uh, people would carry the basket away, and when they returned, they would hit the whole handle to wake me up, and I would do the same when it was their turn to uh, dig the earth. Did you ever see anyone collapse or die while they were working? I saw uh, workers who felt unconscious while they were carrying earth, and I also saw workers who died. Can you describe for us what that looked like, what the workers looked like when they fell unconscious or when they died while doing their job? Yes, I said uh, uh, they died because of uh, overwork and because of uh, insufficient food. We started working at 3 o'clock in the early morning and we stopped at 11 a.m. for lunch when the bell rang. And then we had to work from 2 to 5 in the afternoon. And we only stopped for about uh, five uh, minutes, then we continued working until about 10 or 11 p.m. The workers who you saw collapse and die, were those adults or children or both? It was uh, both uh, children and adults. Are you able to estimate how many times you saw that happening? President, uh, witness, please uh, wait. And Council Copper, do you have a floor? Um, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, this witness is, as far as I um, recall, the first uh, witness who seems to be implying that people um, died after they collapsed on the work site. Uh, but I'm not sure whether he actually means that. Um, I think 
a distinction should be should be made to what he saw in the sense of people collapsing and subsequently whether he actually saw them people die. Um, I think he's making a conclusion. Um, and so I think we should be very clear on this. Um, and the prosecution should uh, not try to put these two things together into uh, one question. Mr. President, I'll, I'll try to clarify that issue. Uh, sir, for the, the workers who you believe died after they collapsed, uh, what makes you think that they died? They died after they collapsed. Some of them uh, collapsed there, and then they tried to resuscitate uh, the worker, but uh, to no avail. And the person dies there on the spot, and uh, some die from uh, starvation, lack of food. So is it correct that you watched, you watched them try to resuscitate the worker and you saw that they were unable to? Is that why you believe that these people died? Uh, please uh, repeat your question. Did you actually watch as attempts were made to resuscitate workers who had collapsed? Que l'on essayait de ranimer des travailleurs qui s'étaient évanouis. Yes, I saw. I saw it. Oui, je l'ai vu. And you also saw that those attempts were unsuccessful. And that's how you know that those people died. Is that what you're telling us? Yes, that is correct. I'd like to turn now to the question of work quotas. Can you tell us whether you had a work quota when you first started working at the Chopping Tama Dam or whether you had a work quota later at any point during your work there? At uh, the beginning, they only uh, imposed the uh, working hours. Début, For example, we started early Donc and stopped at around 10 or 11. Matin, However, about uh, a fortnight or a month after, the work quotas were imposed. On so on we had to dig the earth in terms of uh, meters of uh, the land. And the work quota was imposed on a daily basis. Et ce quota de and était if you quotidien. completed Donc, the work quota that si day, then you would have your normal food ration. ration, and if you could not, then your food normal. ration would be Sinon, reduced. On la de and who Question. gave you your work quota? Et who who told you what your work quota was for a particular day? Était votre tâche pour ce jour -là? It was the group chief and the Réponse. unit chief uh, who imposed uh, the work quota and who reused our food ration if we did not complete the work quota. Did your group chief and unit chief tell you where they had gotten their assignments? In other words, did they tell you where these quotas ultimately came from? From what I knew, I received a work plan from my group chief and unit chief who imposed the work quota upon us. Do you remember what your work quota was on a typical day? 
question. Vous souvenez-vous du quota de travail, justement, qui vous était imposé? Réponse. Uh, on the first day, we would be given uh, a plot of one meter disait, that day, and if we complete it, then they would increase it the next day to 1.5, si and then to 2, le for example, and if we could not complete it, then our food uh, would be reduced. In your OCIJ statement, you used the term storm attack with respect to your work. Can you tell us what that meant? The word storm attack was uh, work harder to complete the work plan, and that information was uh, relayed to us uh, during a big uh, conference. They told us that the uh, canal project uh, had to be completed in three months. Devait être, euh, plutôt que la construction du canal devait être achevée en trois mois. You told us a few minutes ago that Question, vous, nous, at the beginning you didn't have a quota, you just début, had working hours. Il avait pas and then later, later a quota was imposed. De quota de travail. Did anyone tell you why they began to impose a quota? Did anyone explain why they were starting to impose a quota? Pourquoi? Please uh, refresh your question. Réponse, I don't get la question. Je rien. Je pas yes, it's it's somewhat complicated. Question, I'll, I'll try to make it simpler. Je vais de la At the beginning, there was no quota. Later, there was a quota. Au début, il avait pas de quota. Did your Par group suite, chief or unit eu. chief Donc, tell you why they were starting to impose a quota? Uh, the beginning, the uh, work was normal, but uh, through the understanding, it, it did not uh, proceed uh, fast enough. For that reason, they measured the land uh, that we had to, to dig, that is one cubic meter uh, per day on that day. And if we completed that work quarter that day, the next day will be 1.5 cubic meters per day. And if we did not complete, our food uh, was reduced. And during the uh, two or three months period, we worked non-stop. We had to uh, tax the work until the project was completed on time. Can you tell us how it was monitored, how your, your performance was monitored? How did your group chief and unit chief know whether you had met your quota or not? They knew, they knew it because whether we completed the, the work quota or not, because some workers could not complete it as they fell ill, and for that reason they were criticized and that they had to complete it the next day with the, that day quota. And that was the reason why some people collapsed while they were working because of the uh, nature of uh, overwork and they were over exhausted. Did you ever see anyone uh, measuring the earth in any way to determine what constituted one cubic meter or two cubic meters? It was my group chief who uh, measured the land for us to dig. You mentioned that one of the, or, or you mentioned that the punishment for failing to meet your quota was to have your ration reduced. 
Was there any other punishment for failing to meet a quota? We would be reprimanded uh, once or twice, On and if it happened uh, si the third time, se une fois, then that worker would be uh, tied and hang to a rope connected to a frame, a wooden frame. And after that, the person would uh, be let off to go and continue the working again. Can you describe that in a little bit more detail? Can you tell us exactly how the person would be tied to the wooden frame, by what part of their body, uh, using what kind of uh, material? The uh, militia uh, who had uh, weapons and uh, swords uh, did this thing to the workers. And when that was done, uh, was it done in public? Was it done in the view of other workers? Était-ce un châtiment public? Était-ce fait devant les autres travailleurs? Sometimes they let us see it. Des fois, ils nous permettaient fact, de le voir. D'ailleurs, au début, they did this at night time, ils nous faisaient le voir. Quand la personne était revenue, j'ai demandé que ce qui s'est passé. Il a dit qu'on lui a attaché les pieds, qu'on l'avait pendu dans un frame. Then they dropped him off. And that, uh, after a few drops, then he was let go to return uh, uh, back. And if he keep, uh, kept continue doing that, he would be killed. That's how he was warned. Do you know who gave him that warning? Did he tell you who told him that if, that if he didn't change, he would be killed? Vous dites que si on lui a dit qu'on lui a dit que s'il ne corrigeait pas sa façon de faire, il serait tué. C'est bien ça? I actually asked that person, but he didn't dare to tell me because he didn't want the news to, uh, to be spread out. He waved, and uh, later on he was taken away and killed. Did you ever attend any meetings where workers were criticized for failing to meet their quotas? Réunions où les travailleurs étaient critiqués pour ne pas avoir respecté le quota de travail? If my recollection réponse is correct, si mes souvenirs sont bons. Month or two, a meeting Tout was organized, and we were instructed uh, to make our a commitment to receive and accept the work plan and to complete the work plan jointly. At any of those meetings, did you ever hear a phrase used uh, to keep you is no gain, to lose you is no loss? Did you ever hear those words or anything similar at a meeting? Yes, uh, I heard that phrase every day. When they approach us, they would uh, use such a phrase. They said that we were useless workers and it was no gain to keep us and it was no loss to remove us. Who said that? <coughs> It was the, the militia, uh, those uh, the, group, the, the group of people who had their weapons and uh, swords, 
armée. They were et, actually et des armées, pretty des young. They were children, Ils étaient assez not jeunes. adult. C'était des enfants, nul doute. Did they did they Question. say that at meetings or did they tell you that while you were working? What was the what was the context? Quel était le contexte? In the meeting, that uh, message was also uh, broadcast, and out of the meeting, outside, I mean, they also said uh, these words. And in the meeting, who was it who said those words? He was referred to as a. Uh, the big chief, le, le grand chef. and from my recollection, uh, his name was Wal, Taval. Val, Taval. Can you Question. estimate how many times you attended meetings Et where Taval was present? Dire, uh, combien de réunions, à combien de réunions I cannot uh, remember it. Uh, maybe it happened uh, two or three times, and it it varied. Sometimes it happened every fortnight. And actually, while we were in the mobile unit, we were happy to attend uh, such a meeting because it means that we could rest. Are you able to tell us what kind of person Taval was? Sa personnalité. Please uh, repeat your question. Uh, are you able to tell us what kind of person Tabal was? Are you able to describe his character? I was uh, pretty young at the time, so I cannot uh, tell you uh, about his uh, behavior or character. Do you know whether he remained the, the chief of the work site during the whole time you were there, or do you know whether he was replaced at some point? I did not know where he went when the uh, regime fell in 1979, and to my recollection, he was uh, there until the end of the regime. Okay, I'd like to ask you now about uh, working hours. You've already you've already mentioned something about it. Specifically, you've mentioned something about three or four in the morning. Can you tell us whether that's the time you woke up, or is that the time you actually began work? We woke up to work at three o'clock in the morning. And we continued working until 11 a.m. when we stopped for lunch. And we rested only about 10 or 15 minutes after lunch. We started working again until 5 p.m. where we stopped again for meals. And after meal, we had to work again until 10 o'clock at night. And was nighttime work something you did Question. every day, or was that occasional? Et le travail nocturne était-il quotidien ou était-ce à l'occasion? It happened every night. Réponse. Toutes les nuits. For example, during one full month that I was exemple, there, we worked été, every night, and we could only stop nuit. at uh, 10 p.m., and then we had to wake up again at 3 a.m. the next day to continue the working. 
And early in the morning, at late at night, what was your source of light? How were you able to work uh, before sunrise and after sunset? La source d'éclairage. Donc après, avant l'aube et après le crépuscule. They actually uh, had uh, light for us uh, to work uh, through the night. Qui nous permettait de travailler la nuit. I'd like to ask you now about your food ration. Can you tell us uh, what your food ration was normally and what your food ration was uh, when it was cut uh, for failure to meet your quota? Si vous ne respectiez pas le quota de travail. There's a, a, a bowl of uh, a bowl of uh, rice, and on top of that, there's a bowl of uh, soup. And the bowl of rice was partitioned into four for four workers. And uh, there were only about two or three ladles uh, of rice that we could eat per each partition for each worker. Ou trois louches de riz dans chacune de ces divisions pour chaque travailleur. Did your, did your weight stay the same during the time you were at the trucking to Ma Dam, or did you become more skinny or more fat? Avez-vous engraissé ou avez-vous maigri alors que vous étiez sur le chantier? While I was uh, working, working there, I was so emaciated, and compared to the uh, condition of uh, sick people uh, now, it's like you you were sick from AIDS or HIV. You've told us what your food ration was normally. What would your ration be when it was reduced if you failed to meet your quota? Vous avez parlé de votre President, le, le président uh, Deputy International Co-Presiteur, uh, please uh, hold on Rajon for a minute. Uh, there is a technical problem with the transcription machine. Un petit problème technique avec la machine à transcrire.
บ่าเอ้ยได้สามีนปัญหาฟอนด์เรื่องของเทคนิคของการทำการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของการเขียนของ Resume on the 30th of September at 9 a.m. The chamber will hear témoins Sotsopol, witness Sotsopol. Les parties, veuillez venir à leur indiquer. Monsieur Sotsopol, votre déposition n'a pas encore touché à sa fin. La chambre vous. The chamber. Je vous invite à venir déposer ici à partir de 9 h du matin. Requests you to come testify here tomorrow as of 9. A.M. Court officer, please bring witness Sopol back to his place of residence and bring him back to the courtroom tomorrow morning at nine. Agent de sécurité, veuillez reconduire les accusés qui sont prêts et non tirés au centre de détention et ramener demain. Or to the detention center, correct, interpreter, and bring them back to the courtroom tomorrow morning before nine. All right.